Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So this channel, Everyday Data Science, is all about trying to learn the different concepts involved in data science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, I'm going to solve this question on lead code regarding products, words over invoices and try to work you through how we can develop solutions to such problems. The difficulty level of this question is easy. Okay, let's jump right in. We are given a table called product with two different columns, product ID, name, product ID being the primary key for this table. E this table contains the ID and the name of the product. The name consists of only lowercase English letters and no two products have the same name. Okay. We are also given a second table called invoice with six different columns, right? Invoice ID, product ID, rest, paid, cancel, refunded. Invoice ID being the primary key for this table and the ID of the invoice. Product ID is the ID of the product for this invoice. Rest is the amount left to pay for this invoice. Paid is the amount paid for this invoice, cancelled is the amount cancelled and refunded is the amount refunded for this invoice. Now we are asked to write a SQL query that will for all products, for all products, remember, return each product name with the total amount due, paid, cancelled and refunded across all invoices. The final result should be ordered by product name. Let's go through this example, right? So we have two different products, right? Ham and bacon. And these are various invoices, right? So for example, let's take for product ID equal to zero, right? Product ID zero is basically ham. So across all the invoices, so product ID zero, so it basically have, you have basically two invoices with different values. So across all the invoices, product ID zero, that is ham, has how much rest? So two plus zero, that is two, right? Paid zero plus four. Similarly, cancelled five plus zero, refunded zero plus three, right? And similarly, if we do for bacon, you need to add all these four rows, right? So, and if you see for ham, rest two, paid four, cancelled five, refunded three, right? And that is what we need to do. Okay. So since uh, we need to, you know, in the output, we need the name, right? Uh, so obviously, and the information is, uh, in these two different tables, right? So obviously we need to merge this, but how do we merge this, right? So do we write from invoice table left to join product table or do we write from product table left to join invoice table? Okay, now you might think, okay, like uh, what we can do is we can just go ahead with the invoice table, right? Uh, group by the product ID calculate the sums right for all these columns and return it and and the final what we can do is we can join these two tables or what you can say is another way is let's join so with let's write from invoice left join product table right and then group by the product id or the name because it says like uh, each product has going to is going to have unique name so you can group by that and do the calculations but think about a test case where that is going to be a failure. Okay, the hint is in the question itself. It says write a SQL query for all products, right? What if, so here we had two different products and we had invoices where, you know, the we have information about these two products. Let's say there was another product with product ID 2, right? And the invoice table remained the same. Now. If you go ahead with writing, you know, from invoice left join product, right? And then you are basically grouping by the product ID, right? Then what is the problem? So for this, right, the so product ID, it will find a match for zero and it all this will find a match with one, right? But since there is no two in this invoice table, so in the final output, you are not going to have that value for two right but the question says you need to have for each of the product name right so it does not matter whether it is in the invoice table or not so obviously if it is in the invoice you just calculate the sums and if it is not then obviously you need to return zeros in all those cases right so that is what we need to do so to take care of this problem we should go in the reverse way so since we need to get all the products so to make sure what we should do is we should write left join product table on invoice table because what will this do okay so what will this do is here it will say okay zero it will find two matches right so you will going to have two rows for this then one is going to find four matches right so it the, it is going to have all this four rows let's say there was another product id 2 it is not going to find any match so there is going to be one row with all the null values right but when you group by 
so you are going to have that product in your final output okay let me go ahead and start building this it will be more clear right so what i'm saying is from this product table right so from this product table alias sp let's left to join the invoice table alias as i on p dot product id is equal to i dot product id right so this is going to make a join right so what is this going to have so zero is going to find two matches one is going to find four matches right so it is going to have all these six rows right now once we have this then what we can do is we can directly go ahead and say group by right we can group by the name right so we write p dot name because name column is in the products table right so you group by p dot name after joining you are going to have right all these two columns and all these six columns right so that is why you can group by p dot name and once you group by p dot name then what you are going to do let's return p dot name why because in the output you need to have that name right and now once you are grouping by that name so like for example right so here you are going to have so imagine this invoice table but before this two more columns right so the product id here zero and name ham right and then invoice id this 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 then again second row zero ham and all this here it is going to have one bacon this one bacon one bacon one bacon right and you are grouping by the name right so the name column you are grouping by and then what you are doing is sum this sum this sum this sum this right because you need to get across all the invoices right so you write sum of rest rest and all these columns are in invoices table right so sum of i dot rest right as rest because in the final output you need to alias this to rest right similarly for paid cancel and refund it so let me just go ahead and write this i dot paid as paid right sum of i dot cancelled as cancelled right and sum of i dot refunded as refunded okay now the uh, one thing that we need to do is since the question says order by product name right so let's write order by p dot name in ascending order right by default it is ascending order there is still one thing left right what is that thing again remember like if there was product id 2 so what is this going to have so 0 ham 0 ham 1 bacon 1 bacon 1 bacon 1 bacon and then it is going to be 2 and let's say there is something a sandwich right so two sandwich and it is going to have null across all these six columns right and when you are grouping by p dot name so it is going to be two sandwich and then the sums are going to be null right so obviously null does not make sense right you obviously if it is not in the invoice tables then it is going to be zero 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 right so how can we do that if something is null you can replace it by something else right and the function that we use is if null so we can go ahead and write if null right so if this value comes out to be null then replace it with zero similarly for all this right so if null this comes out to be null then replace it with zero if null right comma zero and if null comma zero okay so now this looks good let me go ahead and run this to see what happens so this is accepted our output is same as expected output let me go ahead and submit it to see if it passes all the test cases so yep this passes all the test cases and this is how we do it again very simple question the only thing that you need to keep in mind is i do you need to write left join invoice on product or you need to write it vice versa why we wrote like left join product table on invoice table because 
the question says for all products and it can be possible that some products are there in the product table but no one has bought it right or there is no invoice related to that but in that case you need to obviously return zeros right and that is why we are doing this and uh, to return to replace nulls we use if null function right so yeah this is how we do it let me know if there is a better way or a more efficient way you can think of to solve this question let the solution be in the comment section below and until then i will see you guys in the next video